I'm dedicating this to my mother who is hearing it for the first time tonight. <laughs> it's called Flower Kid, or How I Stopped Trying So Hard and Became a Figment of My Imagination. When I was four years old, my parents took me and my sister to the toy store. She got a potty training doll that peed out of a plastic hole, and I got to choose my own doll. My best friend had a room full of Cabbage Patch Kids, and I chose something called a Flower Kid. It was like a Cabbage Patch Kid, only not the real thing. For years, I wondered why I'd chosen something I didn't want. I wanted a mountain of popular dolls like my friend. I think I knew I was supposed to get something different. My family ate healthy food two decades before everybody else. We listened to classical music instead of pop, and we were Jews in a neighborhood of other white ethnicities. That flower kid doll was trying so hard to be the real thing, but it just couldn't be as cool as those round cheek toys my neighbor had. I must have identified with it. I knew I was supposed to be different, but it was not until much later that I saw how I was different. At four years old, I did know I wanted to be an artist, and when I was old enough to see it, my art showed me who I was, and it terrified me. Pink was my favorite color. I played with Barbies and My Little Ponies, but my favorite toys were Legos and anything I could build with. I didn't know how to relate to other kids, but it didn't matter much to me. I had my art, I wrote poems, and I sang songs to myself on the playground. I thought of myself as happy. Not allowed to watch much TV, which I am still thankful for. I played imagination games with my cousin, creating stories while walking around the backyard. In one recurring story, I was Professor Purple. Though I was the younger, smaller, and shyer of the two, I as Professor Purple, fixed her broken toys and solved her problems. Professor Purple was, in my imagination, very clearly a kindly old man. I doubt I ever said so out loud or considered it much at all. When I was 12, I got a squishy feeling, slow dancing with a boy, always skinny, the smallest child in my class until I finally had a growth spurt at 15. I waited for my body to develop. I was a girl, and eventually I would become a woman with curves and a figure, and then I might actually hold hands with a boy. At a certain point, I realized, I realized that those changes would never happen in the way I wanted them to. One day during summer break home from college, drawing a woman with long flowing hair, I observed that I seemed unable to draw men. Wondering if I even could, I tried, and each time the face came out looking androgynous instead. I tried again, and out came a tree sprite, a delicate, mischievous, woodsy creature of ambiguous gender with wings. I looked at what I had drawn and understood something. I wrote Claire as sprite above the sketch, and the following summer I cut my hair. My father asked if I had done it to attract women. I didn't bother trying to explain that I had done it to look like an imaginary winged creature. My drawings started to express the relationships I had no, close, no clue how to approach in real life. One day I created a particularly delicate, wistful series of tiny figures. Drawn from behind, they were naked and bald, without gender. The first was labeled loneliness, and the second, with an androgynous shoulder to lean on, was labeled comfort. By the end of the series, the second had seduced the lonely first, and that one was called Surrender. In that picture, they both had hair, and what I saw scared me so much that I cut them out of my journal and hid them. Precious, terrifying, and gay. Studying overseas shortly thereafter, I met my first boyfriend, a short, sweet, gentle, musical, theater-loving young man. I came home and had my first actual crush on a girl. I did a double take one day in the library as a senior when I saw a first year with rosy cheeks and long, shiny black hair. I never forgot the feeling, nor the shame and confusion that followed. After college, I worked myself towards a nice little breakdown, throwing up every morning from the anxiety of trying so hard to do so much so that I wouldn't have to face who I was. I let my hair grow along the opposite of Samson, I lost my androgynous power. I had another crush on a woman and then fell in love with a caring and devout Muslim man who offered me marriage and the end to all of my confusion. He described me as feminine. Marrying him, I would be able to avoid myself forever. I considered it for years. I reached rock bottom when he left town for the Hajj. Finally willing to admit my loneliness, I let the world in. I cut my hair, started painting again for the first time in years, and at 26 I almost uncovered those hidden drawings. But I still wasn't ready. I came out to my next boyfriend as bi and started obsessively googling androgyny. I learned the word transgender, felt it didn't describe me, but was inexplicably drawn to learning more and wanting to understand who they were. I took a butch versus femme internet quiz and got the result, true andro. I told nobody. I met a man at a wedding who I was certain was gay but was flirting with me. I learned he identified as an androgynous man and had considered transitioning to being a woman. I was intrigued. There was hope. A bridesmaid at that wedding. I had makeup sprayed on my face, wore a long fuchsia dress, 
and this flowing shawl. My eyebrows were waxed and my armpits smoothly shaved. I was in drag. Because my art was too personal, I'd pursued music as a career, and when my band went to take our photos for our album cover, I almost wore a long black dress and faux diamond earrings. I probably haven't put anything in my pierced ears since. The pinstripe pants, fedora, bow tie, and jacket that I wore that day became my onstage uniform. My father asked me if I realized that I looked like a boy. On stage, I felt powerful under the hot spotlights, looking like a cross between Charlie Chaplin and Molly Pecan as Yiddle. I was able to look directly at the audience. I sang in a sweet soprano, yet felt a solid courage underneath the buttons down my front. I sang drinking songs and socialist anthems. I was not graceful or fragile. I was fooling all of them. I was hiding, but I wasn't hiding. I was Professor Purple. I was Clara's Sprite. No longer trying to fit a mold that always felt false, no longer feeling like a fraud and believing everyone could see right through me. I was fiery, radical, opinionated. Always an overachiever, I felt I'd failed to reach the uh, milestones of adulthood that I believed I was supposed to have accomplished by that point. Finally embracing my failure for the gift that it was, I wrote my own ending to my coming of age story. I didn't get a popular Cabbage Patch Kid or an almost as good flower kid. I'd created something entirely my own. I'd never developed into the woman I always expected to be. I became something even better. Nobody was surprised when I came out at work the following year. I told family and friends that I'm attracted to women, men, and everybody else. And as for my own gender, I started noticing butterflies that summer. One evening, I noticed a large yellow and black one, five or six inches across, trying to get out a closed window in the hall. I opened the window, but it stayed where it was, desperately beating its wings against the glass, inches from freedom, trapped and trying too hard. Panicked that it might exhaust itself to death in front of me, I got a laundry bag and gently surrounded it until it had no choice but to surrender. It took only a second to move it lower open the bag, and let it fly. Thank you. <laughs>